Hello my soccer universe, let's get it out, out of the way, Inter win the derby, 2-1, 20th title, second star, blah blah blah, congratulations, let's be done with that, I want to actually talk about the more interesting things in Serie A, and yeah, even the 20th title, I don't necessarily want to bring it up, Inter should uh, argue that with the Juve fans out there, I still think, to me it's kind of 19, because the one in 2006 was gifted to them when... Afterwards, it was anyway shown that Inter also made phone calls in the, con in, in the refereeing committee. But I don't want to warm this up. Congratulations, I have lauded Inter enough on this channel this season. They have had an amazing season. They won the derby, they probably won it even deservedly so. Uh, As the Tifo said, nothing changes. <laughs> I'm smiling, yes. Uh, it's the worst case scenario for any Milan fan, what happened yesterday in the evening. Uh, however, it was so obvious it's got... I mean, you saw it from a month out, if not more, that this is exactly what will happen. And uh, well, however you may try, it's exactly what happened, and so yeah. I think everyone was prepared for that, literally. I mean, otherwise, I think this T4, uh, such things take a whole lot of preparation. Uh, they knew that this is coming. They absolutely knew that this is coming. So, there you go. Again. Begrudgingly, congratulations. Uh, what can I say about the derby? I really want to go right in, into it. Um, from a Milan perspective, it's, the first goal just annoys me so much. Inter were the better team. And if it wasn't for the late search for Milan, there were a few chances late in the first half, but Inter overall had the game squarely under control. It's just, the corner came and I said, yeah, uh, it's another dead ball save situation where Inter are dangerous and Milan cannot defend it and exactly that happens. The corner is whipped in and falls to Acerbi. Free, no one more marking, yes. Chance by Leal, really good chance by Calabria where Sommer made a great save, but then uh, right on the other one, uh, Turam runs through. And Mike Vignol saves his right to, uh, or it's blocked the right to Miki Tiartiarian who has a Again, no one marking, and it's Mike Mignon who saves. However, Mike Mignon also needs to look at himself because that second goal that Thuram scores, that was not a screamer or anything. Uh, you should have this one. Deonandes had a chance then after Gabia uh, had, I think it was a great layout across Gabia, had it goes on to the upright. Uh, and then the bounce back to Mori puts it in 1 2 in the 80th minute. Yes, there's a fight, we can get a draw! We can avoid the total embarrassment. <laughs> Never happened. I mean, they tried. They tried and they went down with a fight. However, it was not the fight that I actually wanted to see. Uh, I want them fighting to stay in, in, in the game and, you know, really leave it on the pitch, everything. That I didn't even feel that much. And so, yeah, uh, then, of course, John Dumfries and Teo Hernandez uh, get on each other's throat. Both are sent off. Uh, deservedly so. Uh, I think the last red card for Calabria, uh, he just wants to free himself from uh, Fratesi. <sighs> yes, it hits the face. Do we need to give a red card for, for that? I don't know. And, you know, it's not... It, it, the annoying thing, of course, is that now they're playing Juve. Again, game doesn't matter that much anymore. Both teams are sh You know what I want to say. Uh, at, at the moment, still, you uh, missing already the, the Hernandez. Yeah, Calabria, probably you can. It's still. Uh, it's two at the defense. That's not great, honestly. But yeah. Uh, Milan season. And you know, uh, two or three weeks ago, I made this video on how I actually would think that Pioli should stay on. Still kind of. Although the, the season completely fell apart in the past two weeks. First being so uh, comprehensively eliminated by Roma. Comprehensively eliminated by Roma. And now lose, losing Derby. I mean, you had within two weeks, you had the season there. It was clear. You uh, win the Euro you try at least to win the Euro Europa League. And I think if they would have gone out with a fight against Roma, uh, I think I would see a bit more. But this, this, this was, there was nothing. Especially the their, their, their return. It was really being outcoached by the Rossi. Uh, so there's the first one, then was win the derby. <laughs> so six derbies in a row to lost. Crap. Absolute crap. I have to say. And I'm still thinking that Pioli overall did a good job, and probably the expectations from Milan land are too high because of the championship. 
granted. If you finish in second place, I think just five years ago, you would have taken se uh, second place any time. I mean, the last time they finished second, this was a big celebration. And then the next season, they won the championship. So uh, you see, it is not all that bad. It's just expectations. Expectations. I don't see necessarily a manager that is clearly coming in to make things better. And don't come to me with Conte. I don't want to see Conte anywhere near Milan. I don't. Just the whole trouble that he, he brings. Let him go to Napoli. Although if Pioli is really gay, gets fired, I think Napoli will do very well to get Pioli. Also got to be sense. Don't want to say more. Let's close the chapter of the Derby. Let's close the chapter of the Championship. It is done. Inter can reach 100 points. Let's close this. Let's talk about other things. The biggest news came out of Europe. Yes. That was a huge disappointment for me. But Italy have secured a fifth Champions League spot. This means that there will be at least oh there will be at least eight teams in Europe next season. Or maybe there might just be eight teams, but they could be up to six Champions League spots. How? Well, uh, if Roma or Atalanta win the Europa League and finish fifth or below, the sixth place team will definitely get into the Champions League as well. That's amazing for Italian football. That's really, really a great achievement. Maybe the growth decree that has been abolished has something to do with it. But that's something you can build on. That's something you can build on, you can be proud of. And it shows also that the, the Serie A, unlike other top leagues, is not so top heavy, which I have to say with a caveat. Uh, it, Serie A feels a little bit like League 1 this season, where uh, you have one outstanding team and then a whole lot of relatively uh, good and evenly matched teams. Unlike, for instance, uh, La Liga, who have two, max three good teams and the rest is kind of so-and-so. Uh, I also look a little bit at the Bundesliga where you have really only three, maybe four good teams and then the rest when they go to Europe. Yes, Frankfurt won it, but it's not so, also Premier League. Uh, I mean, the Premier League is a whole chapter on itself because it's not necessarily that teams are not competitive. It's just that there's more money to be made in the, in the Premier League. But I really think, especially this season, uh, just below Inter is extremely level. With teams having phases up and down, up up and down. I mean, Juve was in the tight title race until they lost to, to Inter. That uh, knocked them out. Now they're gone. Uh, but they had a really good half season. Milan, uh, over is probably the second best, best, best team. But, you know, there's a Bologna, there's a Roma, there's Atalanta, there's Lazio, Napoli, Fiorentina. All of them would make it into in, in Europe. And as we see with Fiorentina, they probably have a chance for reaching a second European final. Roma have had reached four semifinals in a row. And Roma have made it to the Champions League. This shows how competitive the league actually overall is. And that's a good thing. That makes the league actually interesting to watch. So, really, really pleased with that result. Also means Milan only need one more point. One more point to secure Champions League quali quali qualification. I guess they will get this done. I guess they will get this done. And then uh, uh, we also have, uh, speaking of a uh, level league, <laughs> it's not only for the Euro, Europe, Euro, European sports where we have, you know, uh, Bologna, Roma probably will be the teams that make it into the Champions League. But Atalanta is really pushing and I, I don't know, Lazio don't seem really out of it as well. We gotta see. Uh, Napoli, Fiorentina, Tor Torino probably for the Conference League spot, uh, if that should be. We also have to see how the Coppa uh, will go, uh, where we have. The semi-final uh, return legs coming up Tuesday and Wednesday. So already on the day of posting, uh, first uh, Lazio have to overcome a two-goal deficit against Juve, and then uh, we have Atalanta overcoming a one-goal deficit to Fiorentina. So let's talk a little bit about the other games that were happening uh, in Serie A. We had Lazio going to Genoa. I mean, uh, getting a one-nil win through who else? Luis Alberto, the guy who said he wants to leave the club immediately after the goal he was celebrating, pointing to the eagle, blah blah blah, uh, and.
and you saw some loud defense reacting. Uh, you know, taking that not really, really, really well. Uh, maybe he has been misinterpreted, but I found this in interesting. But I thought Genoa was good, good in the game, and Genoa is a team that um, has been surprising me for sure. Uh, then the next one, uh, we had Kaliri against Juve, 2-2. But Cali had a Tuni lead at the half, halftime through two penalties, and they were much the better team in the first half. However, Juve can come back. It was a really cool free kick by Vlaovic at 61st to put Juve back, back on the map, and immense pressure. Cagliari, a team that's really fighting, fighting hard for our survival, and they probably will uh, get it. And I'm really pleased with, with that. Claudio Ranieri doing another good, good job. However, it's an own goal at the end that see Cagliari lose, uh, lose uh, the three points. But I think you would then in the end deserve the point. Uh, Napoli again going nowhere. Uh, early goal by, by Cherry uh, in the fourth minute for Empoli. Had a deserved halftime lead of, of overall second half. Half chances. I mean, what is Nap Napoli at the moment? This is a team that needs to be ripped up. And completely new start. That's exactly what De Laurenti said on the other side. Yeah, you had such a brilliant team. This, to me, is the biggest shame because we could have had an absolutely brilliant title race between Napoli and Inter. Spalletti would have stayed on if De Laurentiis would have kept it all together. Uh, was not to be. Unfortunately, it was not, not to be. Beautiful things don't last forever. You can be sure that the Nerazzurri will be solid next season. Let's put it this way. I don't see another fall from, from grace like Napoli ones uh, had. Uh, then a huge one in the relegation. So, so, so we have now a few uh, really big relegations. Uh, Empolis, uh, that's a big win that kind of puts them now um, three points ahead of the drop zone. Uh, we had also uh, Verona, a huge 1-0 win over Ud Udinese. That goal came really late. I, I, I want to say that uh, Verona overall had the better chances in this game. Udinese maybe had a little bit more of the game. Uh, it's a very late do the core corner where Coppola then heads it in in the 93rd minute. So really last minute of stoppage time. That was, uh, I mean, they, they played play on a little bit later. Uh, but that, again, also three points ahead, head, head of the drop zone. Uh, Hellas looking a little bit better at this moment, whereas Udinese is in trouble. Coach out. Who is coming in? Fabio Cannavaro. That's gonna be in, in, in interesting. Udine also have a game in hand. However, that's the draw with Roma that still needs to be finished. It's 1-1 at the moment with about 10 minutes to go. 50 minutes this will be played on Thursday. So, uh... Wait for that. I think uh, this could be an interesting because both teams really, really need the points there. Uh, Udine to stay safe, uh, but also Roma to stay uh, kind of in the Champions League contention to lift themselves off Atalanta a teeny little bit. Uh, then Sassuolo seems like a goner at, uh, at the moment. Uh, Lecce, and what a huge support Lecce brought to Reggio di Emilia. Yes, that's where Sassuolo are playing, if you didn't know. Uh, that's a big road trip. I would assume there are many, many Lecce fans living up north, as, 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 as typically. After 15 minutes, Lecce had a 2 nil lead and celebrating in front of their own fans. Uh, uh, Gendre and, and Dorgu get, 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 getting to get goals. They probably should have made it three before they have Piccoli, then makes in a 661st another. This is seeming uh, like with Kaka Kaliri getting the point. Um, of this is even better because Lecce now is a 35 points, seven points ahead of the drop zone. Really looking good for Lecce. Another really good showing. Honest, honestly, for a team, there's always relegation threatened. So, uh, really big credit what's going on there. Salatanatana is, of course, the team that is get, 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 getting re relegated. However, they gave a good fight uh, to Fiorentina, who, you know, coming off Europe and, and so on, also all over time. They leave it late, Kwame and Ikone scoring the late goals there. But um, it was an important win for Fiorentina. As I said, Salatanatana probably is going down. Uh, Atalanta looked like a sure winner at Monza for a long time. They kept the Lara. Uh, giving them the lead uh, in the 44th minute, I think it was a cross or corner uh, kick in uh, and a header, very, very sturdy header, I have, I have to say. The Catalan doesn't look this way and unfortunately he looks much better playing for Atalanta than he ever did for Milan, although I was really so hyped on this on, on this play. I, I, he, I, he has amazing potential. Just didn't, didn't work out within the Milan count context. When Touré makes in the 72nd minute, again, assist by Lukman, um, 2 nil. you thought this is done. However, uh, Daniel Maldini had come on a little bit before that. He pulls one back in the 89th minute and then very late on, 
he hits the inside of the post and it just does does, 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 does go in. Really would like to see Daniel Maldini grow. We need another Maldini. Come he come back at Milan, then he fires them to a scudetto. How poetic would that be? But you know, let me dream a little bit at, at the moment because I need some positivity. I had the weekend from hell. So a little bit of positivity. Let, let, let me dream. I still hope that Milan will go back to good ways. I think they're overall, overall on a good way. And if there's a Maldini in there, even better. Then probably best for last. I mean, the derby was the big one, but I think the overlook game of the entire weekend, and it was Monday at 6.30, so not a good kick of them, was between Roma and Bologna. This was a straight shootout for who finished fourth. Uh, Roma, of course, coming off the big win over Milan in the Europa League. Bologna having had what kind of misfiring. Boy, gave they a great account of themselves against Roma. Sure that Roma were tired, and uh, these are extenuating circumstances. But uh, the way they played uh, Bologna, a really, really good job there. Uh, they get the goal, Calafiori, <laughs> a Roma player, uh, crosses in and El Azuzi um, with a high boot, but you know, kind of a bicycle kick into the net. Uh, the boot was very close to Pellegrini, who kind of who lost the ball in the build build of there because Bologna was pressing really really high, uh, and Roma didn't get a foot on the field in the first first half, and then again Alzusi assisting uh, Xerxes. Xerxes was kind of really arranging the attack and orchestrating everything quite nicely. Would he? I always wonder if is this a player that's great because he is the best player clearly at Bologna. Or would this player be doing really well at a club like um, Juve or Milan? That's what I, I, I don't know, because he, you saw how Vlahovic was great for Fiorentina at Juventus. He's kind of, mm, you don't know. He's a good striker, but he was not worth the 70 million. I don't think Xerxes is worth uh, that much money himself as well, but he's a great player. I love watching him on the he's, he, he, he's doing for Bologna. I think he should stay in Bologna. I think in that context, he works really, really, really well. Uh, the goal that he scored, it was a brilliant, again, a brilliant ac ac action. Um, it did not deserve the finish where it is uh, scraped off and then the watch shows it's over, over the line. Yes, Serie A has goal line technology. Hello, La Liga, <laughs> for that. So as Moon pulls one back, similar goal, <laughs> kind of um, punched over, over the line, but then uh, Xerxes, a wonderful pass, it was a counter, a wonderful pass to Sal Salamakas, who thinks it over the goal the internet. Three absolutely brilliant goals. Bologna have a very, very firm case now of finishing within the Champions League ranks. I mean, finishing top five is already big. Seeing Bologna in the Champions League, that is something I did not expect, but it's pretty cool. Uh, as I said, we have Coppa Italia uh, semifinals come, come, coming up now in, in this midweek. We have the finish of the Udinese Roma game coming up on Thursday. And then on the uh, weekend, uh, Inter will probably have celebration in front of the home fans uh, against Torino. We have the little matter of Juve Milan, a traditional duel. We not much to play for. I think both teams will kind of stumble over the finishing line. I think Napoli Roma is a big one. Uh, also Bologna Udine. In terms of the relegation picture, that could be interesting as well. That was it from me. Try to be cheery. Try to get the unpleasant stuff out of the way. By the way, there's a Serie A jersey review coming for you this weekend. So please let, let me know your thoughts on Serie A so far, especially this weekend. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.